Hold up, hold up, hold up. Why are you hating on my cute, tiny little economy engine? Did the internet manage to convince you that this thing has zero potential and that it's the ugly, economy-oriented, irrelevant sibling of the famous 4AGE engine? Well, I beg to differ and I pretty much disagree with internet wisdom. I think this thing has potential. But before I talk F versus G, let me answer some of the more fundamental questions I'm certain you have after seeing the thumbnail and the title to this video. Yes, I'm building a turbo engine. And yes, this is going to be the base for that turbo engine. This is going to be a pretty complicated, next level, heavily modified build. My power goal is around 300 horsepower from this, a 1.6 liter economy engine from the 90s. Because it's been done, I don't know, so, so let me do some math. Uh -huh, uh, carry the two. 10 million times. I mean, the 4AGE turbo build has been done to death. Everybody and their grandma turboed a 4AGE at some point. On the other hand, turbo builds of the 4AFE are extremely rare. And on the internet, there's almost zero information when it comes to that. Very little compared to the 4AGE. And I think that this thing... This engine, the F economy head, actually has some pretty good things going for it, but more on that later. Well, because that too has been done many times already. What new additional value would I be bringing to the table if I did something that has been already done? Before I tell you what kind of a build this is going to be, I can tell you what kind of a build this isn't going to be. This isn't going to be one of those vlog style builds where I walk around and shake the camera and I put things together based on internet wisdom and assumptions and then I take it to some tuner and then I play uh, some cool music and do a time lapse of the tuner tapping keys on the keyboard and then I show you uh, a dyno sheet and then we do some burnouts and I call it a massive success and then three weeks later I do one of those epic fail videos and I show you how the engine of course fell apart surprise surprise and how a rod flew through the block or how my piston is in 10 million pieces now we're not gonna do that this is going to be a different kind of build I want to do an engine build that brings value, something that educates and empowers with knowledge, something that relies on verifiable, objective, empirical data, rather than internet wisdom. Uh, I want to use this engine specifically because it's a tiny economy, old, obsolete engine that nobody expects anything from. And I want to use this engine as a platform to demonstrate that by using the right parts, and the right tuning, you can turn every engine into a performer. You can turn every engine into a high performance, entertaining engine that puts a massive smile on your face. And more importantly, I want to make an engine that develops the power that it's supposed to develop and that it does so reliably and continuously. This isn't going to be a build that falls apart after a month. I wanted to make big power uh, reliably all day long. And I'm going to do that by heavily capitalizing on modern tuning technology and electronics. Now this build is going to spawn two entirely new video series on the D4A channel. First of all, don't worry, I'm continuing with Iconic Engines and Engine Bootcamp just like I did before. I'm just adding this thing into the mix. And it's called Project Underdog because this engine is the very definition of an underdog. And I want to demonstrate what you can do with an underdog provided you do things right. But this engine is going to serve an additional purpose. It's going to be the demonstrational platform for something I'm calling Boost School. And while the series Project Underdog is looking at this specific engine and how we do things, Boost School is going to explore all the different aspects of boosting pretty much any internal combustion engine in a educational, informative, and user-friendly manner in video format. 
So within Boost School, we're going to talk in general about everything when it comes to boosting an engine. So stuff like injector sizing, the relationship between compression and boost, camshafts and boost, different types of turbos, uh, turbo size and spool times, different types of turbo manifolds, um, ignition maps, fuel maps, everything, everything, you name it, it's all gonna be covered in Boost School. The end result once Boost School is completed is gonna be in university level course aimed at car enthusiasts it's going to be in video format and it's going to cover everything you need to know uh, about boosting uh, an internal combustion engine and it's going to be available to you for free all you got to do is watch an ad from time to time as you might be guessing, doing such a large undertaking and making it all available for free uh, wouldn't really make much sense. But don't worry, it will be free because I will be relying on the help, support and know-how from my favorite company in the world, AEM, to make Boost School possible. So everybody, say a massive thank you to AEM because Boost School will be powered by AEM and without AEM, it would not be possible. As you have probably realized by now, this is going to be pretty damn serious. And some might call the starting point of this build, this engine, a joke. Uh, but by the time we're done with it, it's definitely not going to be a joke. It's going to be a very serious performing engine. And I won't reveal anything at this point, but in due time you will know everything. And this thing is going to feature some pretty cool things. But because we're doing things like that, and because we're going to be video documenting every step of the process, this is going to take a pretty long time and my initial rough ballpark estimate of the time frame for all of this is around two years so this episode the first one is the beginning of a pretty long journey but it's going to be a really fun journey filled with a lot of knowledge once completed project underdog is going to be swapped into my mr2 I'm sticking with the AW11 chassis because it's fun, it's lightweight, it's mid-engined, I simply love it. This thing, even with the current engine, which is a motorcycle carbureted for a GE, which makes around 130, maybe 140 horsepower after I've done some tweaking recently, even with such a low amount of horsepower, this is an incredibly fun car. It's the definition of a momentum car and I really enjoy driving it. I'm definitely not done with this engine yet. I wanna drive it as much as I can in the next two years. And this is why I'm building Project Underdog on the side and enjoying this car as much as I can during the next two years. Once we're done, once Project Underdog is completed, it's going in and the bicarb for a GE is going out. And at that time, the bicarb engine will probably still be a fresh, healthy engine and I will be swapping it into something else. What that is, I don't know yet um, and I'm open to ideas. Now in the beginning of this video I did promise you to talk a bit about the differences between the F head and the 4AGE head and I will do that but it's going to be a separate detailed video because I do have a 4AGE big port 16 valve head that I'm going to put side by side with this head once I remove it and we will examine them in detail. Before that I will tell you one thing that this engine has going for it. It has a better shape and angle of the intake port onto the intake valve because this engine is a narrow valve included angle compared to the 4AGE, it enables you to design a more straight intake port onto the intake valves. If you look at more modern engines that flow a lot of air well, for example like the K20, you're going to see that they have a design of the intake ports similar to this engine and not on the 4AGE, which is a design more typical of the 80s. So that's all I'm going to say at this point, uh, and we will look at this in more detail when we examine the heads. So yeah, that's pretty much it for today for the big announcement. I hope you're as excited as I am. If you have any sort of comments, questions, ideas, suggestions, whatever, you know where the comments section is and I'm looking forward to see your reaction to this big announcement. So yeah, that's pretty much it for today. As always, thanks a lot for watching and I'll be seeing you soon with more fun and useful stuff on the D4A channel.